All right, guys. I don't want to flip. I don't want to trip y'all out. Like this is like Nico's dressed Who are up. You? Nico's dressed up. I'm dressed up. We we went to this. Uh, we are on our way. I was on my way earlier. We are in Orange. Uh, we just left Matt's parents' house. Matt will not be at the Friday Night Blade Affair, but at any rate, so we just left Matt's parents' house. We are almost to the Friday Night Blade Affair for Blade, uh, I'm sorry, Cali Custom Show. And uh, so we're gonna be there. And I just, last year, so that you guys know, just to understand what happened here. Last year we went, and I don't have my gimb the gimbals in the trunk. So last year we went, and go to the Friday Night Blade Affair. Uh, one, of my, one of my YouTube subscribers asked us to go as proxy. And so we get there, and I'm, I'm in my t-shirt, ball cap, jeans, dirty ball cap, beat up, work boots. Nico's wearing a t-shirt and jeans, and I don't, you're just wearing t-shirt yeah. and jeans. And we get in there, and everybody's dressed like it's the fucking prom. So I was like, you know what? Let's not look like hot trash. Let's not look like hot trash this year. <laughs> so. To prevent the awkwardness of what we dealt with last year, Nico and I were we're going business casual. Even though it's 100 degrees out. It's 197 degrees out here. So hopefully we won't have to stand outside to get our fucking badges. Hopefully, otherwise we're gonna smell awesome. And even even with air conditioner on, like I'm I'm hot, my face is all hot and shit. So didn't mean to didn't, didn't mean to scare you guys with this. So <laughs> we will probably get a little bit of footage tonight at the, at the Friday Night Blade Affair, but not not anything major. Most of it's going to be tomorrow or Sunday. We may take tomorrow for us, or we might just, yeah, tomorrow and then film on Sunday. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. So, I mean, I... I it's probably I can, better to film on Sunday because all the people are going to leave that thing, so better to talk to the makers since they'll actually have time. See, that's why I bring him, because he's smart. He's smart. He thinks. Thanks. His head isn't like mine. It's just full of beer hops and bong residue. So, <laughs> mine is just beer hops. Just beer hops and, and, and whiskey. So, whiskey. yep, guys. So there's your intro. If you're wearing headphones, turn it down. Cause turn them down now. Cause here comes the music. Well guys, obviously, as you can see, we didn't videotape anything today at Friday Night Blade Affair, but we're at Matt's parents' house. And tomorrow, I'm gonna videotape. A little. And then probably, most of the filming will probably be done on Sunday so I can talk to people. So, I know you already listened to the music, but there's a picture of Matthew. So, you guys take it easy. And we will film some stuff tomorrow. So we're at Ed Cope's table. Yesterday we stopped at Ed's table. I talked to him for a little bit. Um, we actually won the lottery for this, which is now Matthews. And I talked to Ed a little bit ago about how he sharp <laughs> how he sharpens. You have to lift it for everybody because you're yeah, so no. low. Yeah. Like I gotta crank it way up. <laughs> everybody can see nose hair and fucking inside my head. <laughs> so I just want to talk to Ed little bit because you never got to talk to you every time I've come by a couple times yeah, your wife and kids busy, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you've been busy the last couple of years I've seen you were really busy so like I said yesterday so much better than like the first time I saw him like three years ago your eyes are your knives are amazing these days so what uh, what's the overall thing with your knives how are you doing them are you doing them all all by hand in shop or? so yeah all the, the customs I'm doing in house by hand uh, the only service I have outsourced is a water jet and parts. Um, and then the production model that was done by Keith Enoch in upstate New York. And it's all made in USA with titanium parts and Steve Kelly hardware. Nice. HP blade steel. Can't go wrong with Steve Kelly hardware. It's, it's yeah, some of the best. Stuff. Yeah, and that, that's something that I made a change a couple years ago. Is all my hardware I switched over to Steve Kelly so this was all titanium. Yeah. So Steve Kelly, Steve's hardware, and it's always fairly consistent. Like a lot of yeah. times you'll get hardware, you try to anodize it, and you get weird splotches because they don't they don't monitor how much heat during the cutting process. 
or, or you'll get hardware that's that's the recycled titanium, and it's just it's got like like you know, I, it's all the same voltage. They're all like eight yeah. different colors. Yeah. <laughs> so, but so as far as uh, just design, you just sit down and draw it out. Yeah, actually, that particular design was. Um, that's what kind of introduced me to the knife movies. Tom Mayo saw that and he liked it, so we did a collaboration together and it's got my name out there. Yeah. But that was a drunken whiskey inspiration that I didn't <laughs> remember drawing. Woke up the next morning, flipped through my book, was like, well, that's actually kind of cool. I like that. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's where that came from. Isn't it funny that everybody throws a fit about me drinking beer while I'm sharpening knives and making knives, but God damn it, some of the best things that have ever happened in a knife world were done. Under the influence of alcohol. <laughs> yep. Here, take that before I steal it. <laughs> so, and one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I took, I was talking to Ed about the sharpening. You guys know, that's my thing. I'm a knife sharpener. I am a professional knife sharpener. I would never think to take one of these knives, like that one that I used to that I get back in, but I would never think that I needed to put an edge on it directly from it. They are fucking sharp. So, um, and yeah, it's just a different process. A lot of different ways to sharpen and get a good end result. I know Bob Terzul uses a paper wheel on a finish. Use a power strop, leather yeah. strop. Yeah, I, I aim for about a 15,000 edge when I'm grinding. It probably comes out somewhere around 20 to 25. Um, and then I just do what Tom Mayo taught me on the field. I just look for about an angle somewhere in there and then grind it across. And then uh, after I've got the burr on the edge, I'll, I'll still take it back and forth to make sure that burr is nice and solid. Yeah. And I'll put that leather wheel on and run it about half as fast as the sheet would go. It's just not, it's just not, to, over, not to overheat it, just making sure you're not getting yeah. any heat at the edge. Yeah. Do you do a wet, so when you do the initial edge, do you use a wet belt or are you just no, doing dry grind? dry. Crank way the reel yeah, reel down so you're not putting a lot of yeah. And then I'll use my air compressor too to actually cool the blade in between the Yeah, I just dump it in a bucket. Yeah. With dirty water, it's been there for three weeks. It's orange. You're like, oh, I'm probably gonna get stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, yeah, guys, Ed Cope knives. <laughs> I can probably edit that into a picture. It's beautiful. I love it. It's great. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Perfect. So, as you guys know, I love coming by Bastinelli Lives. So we're here again. But I don't remember seeing this in Vegas. Was it this, did you have this at the USN? Yes, we have some in the USN, but uh, but uh, like prototypes. And you were talking, you were you were talking yeah. with the other Nico, and I was talking with your wife or someone, and I was just messing around the table because I was tired. So I didn't actually. The yeah. whole last time Bastinelli Nines was was all Nico and and, and Nico. It was yeah. the two Nico show. <laughs> so this is this is your collab with Microtech, right? Yeah, my first collaboration is Microtech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, What's the name of this one? It's iconic. It certainly is iconic. It's pretty iconic. Yeah. <laughs> is this based on a bear claw? It's, it's based on the claw. On the claw. the animal that's like organic aspiration, you yeah. know. Yeah, I really like that's. This is the second good Karamit that I've had in my head. This is a Gramit fixed blade, so, you know, I like that wee knife incisor and this is this is good this is really nice so have you got anything new that you didn't have in vegas besides this um we have this new collaboration uh for the for the sheets uh made by nc laser work uh he makes incredible stuff on the, i saw that yesterday i didn't know if that was new or not yeah yeah, yeah. So it's a new collaboration with him and he makes some stuff with the discrete carry concept ulti clip um it's really beautiful stuff um you make exactly the same uh, she's from the friction folder we have here, the custom one. Beautiful pieces. Nice. Yeah. That is a nice, that's well done. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, we have this. Yeah, that is always in my table. Nico tells me every time that I'm not allowed to have this. No, I say to put it down because you get that look in your eye that you're going to hit me with it. No, I think it was last time you said, you said, put that down. I said, why? He's like, Mike, what do you want to do with that? And I said, I'm the Grim Reaper. You said, exactly, put it yeah, down. exactly. That you're you're going to go put on a hood and start knocking on people's doors. How would you go with the hood? Now, <laughs> this is the one that I hadn't gotten to talk to you about. We kind of talked about it. I think we had some of these at 
at, U, at USN. But yeah, yeah. what I wanted to talk about is so you guys, you know, I like Japanese ways. Like this having this line work on this, yeah. it's like the handle on it on a katana. Yeah, it's fucking cool, and I like. I truly, truly like this color here by itself. But when you do it like this. Look at that, guys. The color's not coming through the way I want it to. Yeah, that is really beautiful. So, but we're not going to take up too much of your time because we always come by and talk, so we'll, we'll catch new stuff. Yeah. So. That is vicious. Yeah. Especially in your hands. That is. Okay. I think I should stop while I'm ahead. That's hard. I don't remember seeing these. That is the RP, my first collaboration with Fred Perrin. You know Fred Perrin, the French guy? Yeah, yeah. Yes, he's uh, really famous for this kind of concept. You put the ring and small claw. Yeah. We worked this concept since 30 years. And uh, like two years ago, I decided to design my own uh, brief and um, ask him to use this concept. So it's for that to have my name on this way and his name on the Yeah, I see that. It's, that is really comfortable. I don't yes, and you know the concept of that uh, at the beginning. Uh, Fred Perrin uh, designed this blade like uh, 30 years ago because he worked on the building and every time you have to use the blade and to use some wrap or something like that, but every time you have to put the blade on the kydex, on put the blade somewhere, you know. Yeah. And with that, the good thing of that, you can use like a wrap, you can make yeah. a knot, you can cut, you can you have your hand free. So yeah. that is the first uh, idea of this concept. After some people say you can use like uh, a fighting or a scream or some stuff you like could. this because it's, it's a safe, but at the beginning, it's a concept like a tool. Yeah. So to use like a free and a, that's, have you picked one of those up? Yeah. yeah, they're super comfortable. Like I had, I don't remember seeing them. I was like, oh yeah, that is so comfortable. Yeah, it was really smart to do that. Yeah, it is. And if you are using it as a defense tool, no one's gonna take that. Yeah, you can't get that out of my hand. You can't. I mean, you can try, but you're gonna regret it. And uh, for the, the funny story, it's um, in Europe, the ring uh, made by Fred Perrin is a little bit smaller because you know in Europe we have a small hand. But since we arrived in the United States, we decided to make a big ring for some <laughs> big guy, you know? Nice. Go ahead and say it. Americans are fat. No, I get no, it. No, no, no. I say big guy. Not say. You no, just have big hands. Not Americans are fat. I mean, no. not that I'm fat. I got no. But if some guy wants to use that with gloves, it's another possibility too, you know? That's, that's the cold weather. I've, I've had people ask for extra quick grips on knives when I would make them because they're in cold environments. They wear gloves a lot. It, it makes sense. So, all right. All right. Super. <laughs> <laughs> so cut off. Point the knife. Hot dog. Honey, I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. I had Ready? to film that because... You had, did you film it? I filmed it. You just talked in Japanese. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're at Kansai, Kansai, <laughs> tape, uh, Kansai Stable, and I was looking at some of the knives I hadn't seen before. Now, I honestly can't remember, guys, if we filmed here before, but these guys, Narita Garai, ne? So they're around the Tokyo area, out near Narita Airport area. Yeah. Um, so I've been there a bunch of times, and I hate that airport. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I hate that airport. So... Uh, these are stuff that I hadn't seen really too many times in my water out of the way, but these are getting into more of the traditional Japanese style folders that you would have seen, like the one you've seen on my channel, the uh, uh, Higunokami that I have that my father-in-law bought for me at the at the hardware store. This is this is a liner lock version, kind of that. It's a flipper, but the ones that I'm referring to are are these. So it's just a, it's a slippier flip, uh, friction with that thumb bar right there, and these are kind of a really cool take on a traditional Japanese folding. Knife. It's kind of like taking Higunokami's are kind of stuck in the past. There's only one guy that makes them that can make them under the Higunokami name, but this is kind of taking that old style and bring it into the 20th century and it's really cool because they are a viable design for a nice little work knife you got something that you can use quick if you're holding it right you're not going to cut yourself you're not crying on anything with that right you're not going to cry <laughs> anything no one cuts this way 
<laughs> That's right. I agree with you. <laughs> oh, that lock's gonna fail. If you cut this way, it's who cares? <laughs> oh, let me cut this. <laughs> so, and you're looking at you're looking at a knife that's a really nice knife between two hundred and ten, two hundred and forty dollars. So, do you have yours? Book or no? Okay. What one was it? Put it. Put it. Poker. Scusa no. Suno sto a. Okay. Guys, these are really, really like you would forget that's in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And they are super thin. That would that's just a nightmare. Hey, look at those cards. Whose cards are those? Did you film? Are you filming? Yeah. Oh, you didn't even give me a warning this time. No, I didn't. Cool. That's that's good. I always do better that way. That way I don't have to fucking edit it. So we're, we're at uh, Mark Begg and Mattia Barani's table, and we're going to talk. To, last time we talked to Mark about the this knife, the one that's going to be the Kickstarter that starts the first, right? The first four. A week from Monday. A week from Monday. This goes live on Kickstarter. But what we're going to talk about are these. Which are the actual Mattia Barani custom kitchen knives? So let's uh, let's get Mattia's take on his knives. How's it going, guys? Yeah, this is all our custom in-house knives that we're making up here in Sonoma County, which is on fire right now, by the way. So hopefully everything is all right when we get back. But uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the shop's still there. But uh, yeah, we've been putting a lot of our heart and soul in these knives, man, and we're just kind of doing some new stuff actually right now. This is our does some new uh, carbon steel that we've been working with, and um, some Damascus over here. These are kind of the new knives that we've been um, just recently making. And, uh, yeah, so it's like, and this is a this is actually a material that we use in a lot of our folder folding knives. It's just a uni unidirectional carbon fiber. But if you cut it at this at a slight angle, you get this kind of uh, chatoyant kind of layer effect, which is really I'm really, I'm really digging. As well as I prepared it with the, um, this is a uh, uh, G Carta. That's what I was going to ask you yeah. what that was. Yeah, that's, that's Greg Greg Hansen, you know, G Carta uh, material, and uh, we're using a lot of this stuff right now. This is like it's, it's how this is a lot of the same. Yeah. It's a different different use of it, and um, and then yeah, this is just like this is our uh, smaller version of our uh, Bowie Chef, America's first culinary blade shape, which I was getting ready to point that one out. I love that. Love this. I I have this one that you sold me at the yeah, show. That's right. Yeah. Or no, that's the right. one. No, you, you gave you sent I me one. It, come on. You gave I me gave one. He bought one at the show. Yeah. I did. A, yeah. You gave me one, of these, and it's it's great. I love this. I wouldn't trade it, but that is an amazing size knife. Yes, this would be something that my wife, who right. complains about the size of this one, right. would love. Right. It's a little more utilitarian, you know. Get a lot more done. Yeah. You know, a lot of people they don't, you know, they don't need a, a large eight-inch knife. You know, so if we, you could definitely wield that one a lot easier. Around, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, this is our this is our full. We sold the other custom Bowie chefs, but this is another one. Yeah, the one I saw yesterday. Yeah, yeah. it's another one. You know, we kind of did a kind of like a patina on the uh, Damascus, um, and just kind of gave it a kind of a, uh, aged kind of you know patina look on that one. Um, but yeah, now these have been going really good for us, man. It's been hard to keep them in stock. Actually, I didn't want all of these, but I could, like we're going to the show. Got to bring something for the uh, yeah. people to show, like you know, show what we're doing as of late. So yeah, it's like it's been really a lot of like I said when I like I said in that Instagram video I did. These are so great. They're so thin behind the edge. They are really super comfortable. And then once yeah, and once you put an once you put it, I mean that that's that's a very good edge right there. But then when you get like once you, once you put a crazy sharp edge on, <laughs> then it gets then it gets really nice. Yeah, I mean well no, this is this one is like if I if this was my knife and it showed up, I would not throw an edge on this. This would get used. Um, so we're trying. We're trying. We're trying to match it up. We're trying. We're trying our hardest. We're not. Gonna, we're not there yet. It's gonna take a while. You're it's gonna, gonna take a while. You have to have somebody there yeah. with water stones going. Yeah. I no, can I hate know. this. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll just pick a week every year and just get a stockpile. And I'll just come up and sharpen yeah, for a week. Yeah, now we're <laughs> come to Sonoma County. Come, if it's if it's still there, if it hasn't burned down, come to Sonoma County. 
We'll set you up. Well, if you guys find out it burned down, you're always welcome to drive down to my house in San right. Diego and hang out. I like San Diego. The water's a lot warmer than where we were at. Yeah. You can't ever get in the water where we're at. It sucks. So let me ask a question. Because we didn't talk about the, the custom knives last time. Okay. From order to delivery, how long are you looking? Not or is it just basically you have to order what's available? Well, I mean, we, we do do some custom work as well, but uh, you know, if, if it's a custom job, it could probably, depending on what we have in stock, it could be about a month, a month and a half, you know, depending on how much it's not that long. I mean, that's not bad. That's not, not a bad turnaround. You know, we're not having, we don't have our five year back or something. Uh, you know, yeah, not yet. Next day, yeah, right. that's the goal. That's, that's the goal. That's the goal is to get so many orders that it's going to take you five years to right. fill them. Exactly. But no, I mean, I mean that might have been a, a, a short estimate. But I mean, if we have a bunch of materials, you know, probably a month, month and a half to get something laid up. You know, we're small, we're small fact. You know, small yeah. fact. We're just like two or three guys in our shop. And, and uh, put a lot of attention to detail, what people want. And yeah, and then most of the stuff we do, kind of just, I'll sit there and I'll lay up all the designs of the head for the handle. We cut up everything, kind of mis mismatch you know, things around and see what, what works. And, uh, so it's definitely, definitely easier to go that route. But you know, we, do, we do do custom stuff as well. We're actually working on a couple right now. We're actually making one right now for a three star Michelin chef out in, um, in Germany. Uh, John, John Hartley. Yeah, he's, he's, he wanted. He actually kind of we kind of collaborated together because it was a. Uh, I hadn't made it before, but he wanted like a ten inch slicer, kind of like for service. For service, like when you get when the meat comes off or the fish comes off, he'll slice it fresh yeah. and, uh, right before he serves it. So he wanted a ten inch slicer. So I just made that out of a carbon steel. And, uh, Said that to him, so I'm pretty honored that, that he's going to be using that as his uh, three star Michelin rated restaurant. And, uh, and that'll be something we'll add into the line as well. You know, so yeah. It's, it's kind of like, a, I mean, if I had to compare it to something, it's kind of like a sushi. Yeah. Kind of like a sushi night. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's more for service. It's not, yeah. It doesn't have the exact same geometry as like, uh, uh, sushi night would have. But so I'm excited about that one. That's really cool. And, uh, yeah, just you know, continuing evolving, trying to find new materials, new, new uh, processes for steel. You know, we work with Vegas Forge. They can't really say that. We're so like that where they can definitely pass. They're actually making us some steel right now for some customs. And, uh, yeah, you know, just having a lot of fun. Lord, thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Thank you. A good one, Matias. At Scorpion Six Knives. So I've never gotten to stop at Scorpion Six Knives. It's been, uh, I've seen you guys a couple shows, just haven't had a chance. Either you guys are busy or I'm like, I'm fucking done with this, I gotta go. <laughs> Sounds like a show. So, um, so let, what's the, uh, what's the, are these all custom they are. made, made in-house? They are. This is the business. It's just the two of us. And we do all this out of one car garage and one ten power. Wow. You need a 220 box. <laughs> we rent where we're at, so I'm not going to let them have that upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. Out. But uh, we're looking to purchase our first house here soon. When we do that, I mean, if we get a two-car garage, we'll be doubling our shop space. Right? <laughs> so you do this out of a one-car garage. Yeah. And are you, are you using we, a bandsaw and a grinder to do it? We use a water jet. Okay. Uh, just so we can pay our bills and not have to live under an overpass. Yes. After water jet, we do everything else in house by hand. We don't have CNC or anything like that. All hand ground. All hand ground. You're using a two by seventy two. You're not trying to use like a no, one, no, no, a no, one no. by twelve. You're like, it sucks. <laughs> no, it sucks. I'm, I got these belts. I'm just going through these belts like crazy. No, we uh, <laughs> we splurged on grinding machines and heat treat. That those are our Cadillacs. So we have the TW nineties and yeah, AMK. very nice. We have a full AMK nice. setup with everything they make. Uh, so what steel is this? This is a one. Okay. This is CPM M4. I love M4. That's Experimental Damascus from Vegas Forge. Okay. I was just talking about a little bit ago. That's Nitro V. Ooh. Oh. Nitro. And then that. a lot of the blades we had here earlier were CTS, XHP. Um, that's also M4, but that one's been... Uh, is that a coating or is that a... PVD. PVD coating. So for you guys that don't know what PVD is, because I don't get into the scientific stuff, that is a positive vapor de deposition, it's a coating. Yeah. So I don't want to say too many things smart, you guys will fucking stop listening to me. <laughs> it's like, what that hillbilly say? Ooh. Oh, this is, this is even more gorgeous in person. I like it. Oh. I'm not a big fan of Tom's. 
So that one has O one as so, well. Yeah, well he's, so he's O one, okay. okay. Very nice. That's, wow. Oh, for the strap? Yes. Leather? Zip. Because I was like, I know that's not a belt. <laughs> I sharpen. I, that's my whole business. I'm a freehand knife sharpener. They put my stack of cards in there. I was like, that's not belt finish. So he's done nice. something to it. I was just curious. Yeah, leather. It, leather and paper give you a completely different thing. Yeah. Like Bob he uses paper. His final step is paper wheel. I, I love Bob's yeah. knives, but much better lighting. It's, it's a coarser. Grittier edge. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a usable nice. edge. Some people cool. specifically request. I don't want to polish it. Yeah. So yeah, it's the first time we've gotten to stop by. I definitely want to make sure we stop. So there I mean, go. come on, guys, buy their knives so they can get a bigger garage and make more knives. <laughs> bigger come garage. On. Two twenty production. <laughs> buy, buy my knives so I can keep my garage. I like have my cars in it. <laughs> Thank you both. No. Okay, so are we with Doug Ritter from Knife Rights? You guys have seen me in a lot of other people's videos. I just wanted Doug to talk about Knife Rights. You guys know that I talk about like fucking a, carrying a, a fucking handgun without a CCW is a victimless crime. But we're going to talk about Knife Rights. And Doug, if you could tell us what Knife Rights does, because you're basically like NRA for knife people. That is a very succinct description of what we do. We're just like the NRA. Go around the country getting rid of knife bans, um, suing people who are taking advantage of knife owners. Um, uh, the big difference between us and the NRA is, is size. Yes. My annual budget probably wouldn't keep the lights on at, at NRA headquarters. <laughs> but given that, in the last nine years, we've seen 31 bills enacted in 22 states, um, eliminating knife bans in hundreds of cities. Some of them are easy. Some of them have taken years and years and years. Uh, we were suing New York City and uh, DA Cyrus Van Sreer for eight years in federal court. Um, our case headed to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, we had legislation getting trying to get rid of their gravity knife ban, which was vetoed by the governor two years in a row. But now, with our case headed to the Supreme Court last summer, is between a rock and a hard spot, and he finally signed our bill. I heard that. I heard that. So, guys, Doug's thing is always talked about a knife is a tool. And if you're going to ban a tool, you got to take craftsmen out before <laughs> you start taking out knife makers the way I look at it. So, look, knives are inanimate objects. Inanimate objects do not cause crime. Human beings cause crimes. Sometimes misusing that inanimate tool. But don't penalize someone who wants to own or carry a particular tool because some person may sometime misuse that tool for criminal intent. Because some people may use that tool to protect themselves from yes. someone with criminal intent. So we're all about saying knives are tools, doesn't matter how long they are, how they open, how many edges they have on them, they're just a tool. Punish someone who misuses the tool. Don't punish someone who simply wants to own or carry it. You guys heard me say the thing, I laid my 1911 on the counter for three days straight and it didn't jump up and shoot anyone. And I've never seen a knife pick itself off a counter or out of a pocket and hurt someone. Exactly. <laughs> so please support Knife Rights. We're at kniferights.org. Um, we are the ones going out there and protecting people's knives and knife rights. Thanks, Doug. I appreciate it. Thank you. See, I gave you a lead up. Tony's working and shit. I'll let him finish. No, no. Go, go ahead. So we're at Heretic Knives. Uh, Tony actually has a couple things here that he did not have in Vegas at USN, and I definitely want to show him. So, but I'll bring it here, like so I can see it. There we go. Fetch it to me. So we're gonna let we're gonna let Tony talk about most of the stuff you guys saw. Some of the stuff they didn't have in Vegas. The manuals they didn't have. But I'm gonna let Tony talk about it. So, yep. So this is our collaboration with Duhara. It is uh, the uh, Kisahari uh, model that he makes. We called ours the Tenchi. So it's a uh, it's a little 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 knife. This one's a little bit unique right here. I only did two of these. Normally they have the web across the top of the blade. 
what's unique about this knife is that it has an underlay underneath the scale, as you can kind of see it's layered. There's the top scale, then there's the underscale, and then there's the liner. On this particular model, obviously, the, the top scale is titanium, and then the underlay is carbon fiber with a 17.4 liner, DLC blade. The blade is approximately 2.75 inches. So a small knife. My size. So yeah, I, can, my I, can, size. I have an honest question. Is the only difference this that you just grab the flipper tab out? Correct. Well, not, well, not, not the, the flipper, flipper tab, tab the, the top the top piece right here. Yeah. 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 All right, I mean, not the, uh, the, the aperture. Yeah, yeah. Would that hey, consider that a flipper tab as well? Yeah. Because I finger flip stuff. <laughs> I have to ask, how much whiskey was involved in that decision? Yeah, I'm just going to grind it out and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, what happened in, what, you want to know what really happened or you want to well, make I mean, I don't a bullshit want to story? <laughs> <laughs> it's always funnier when you tell people what exactly happened. Well, what exactly happened was I was uh, trying to straighten this blade and it cracked right across the top here. So I ground it away on both sides and I was like, that's going to look dumb. And then I finally finished it, put it together. And I was like, wow, that, that actually works out quite well. <laughs> so it might be a change down the road. You, have, you guys have no idea how hard it was to not buy that knife yesterday. Like I stood here and I literally was like, I can't pick it up anymore. I don't want to pick it up anymore because my wife will murder me. I've already spent money on knives at this show that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that I'm treating it as an investment. If I come back with something I'm keeping, she will murder me in my fucking sleep. <laughs> so what we didn't have at USN, and you know, it's just the upgraded version of the uh, Medusa Martyr. Um, this is the manual version. They're nice. And I, I like this too. This, this is another one that I really like. So the upgrades are obviously the grip enhanced tape inlays and then the single point pocket clip that has a roller ball bearing on there instead of a static ball. Oh. Yeah, it actually rolls. Yeah, because I always like, I like the ball bearing clips, but I always have a hard time getting my pocket. Yep. They're almost too tight. Correct. And so if if it's you, a roller. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you take this one for a ride, it goes in and out quite easily. Allow me to uh, demonstrate. Wait, let, me, let me do a little pocket test here. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. So, good jump. Good so, job, good jump. Tony. Yeah, so yeah. good jump. These are doing quite well for us. Another, uh, not new model, but uh, upgrades to the Wraith Auto is again Ooh. the single point clip. We added a pivot collar on the back side here. Uh, in a future rendition, we'll have a little bit of a bigger button. I always thought the button was a little too small on the Wraith. So, you know. I, I never thought it was too small. I thought it was too far up, and you, I, I would have rather had it had a more it middle. More, but if you make it bigger, that's going to give help. you a, it'll help because you can get it here. Correct. I like, I always like this knife, but like, like you said, it just felt like the button was kind of in a, in a weird in spot. spot. If right. it was just a little bit further, but if you make that button bigger, you can hit it with the side of your thumb. Yep. Yep. And, and of course, the the handle flutes on the face. Very nice. And then everything else you guys kind of saw at uh, USN. Yeah, yeah, USN or any of the other shows, because yeah. we always stop and talk to Tony. We love Tony. Yeah. Um, is there a manual version of this? Uh, there will be next month. <laughs> that's the best thing I've heard. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good. The manual will actually have the bolster on it as well. Oh, like Ooh. correct. So it'll still be a semi-integral, but we added a little bit more flair to the what I thought was a, a little bit more of a boring knife with the manual race and the first rendition. Yeah. This is the one we were talking about that was going to have multiple overlays and stuff, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's an awesome concept. Like we said, it's like build your own knife. Correct. Build a knife. Oh, correct. I don't like this. Oh, no, that was the Osiris. I'm sorry. Oh, that was the Osiris. Well, yeah. I mean, basically, it's kind of the same. Kind of the same. It was yeah. it's definitely a different knife. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another integral, but different. I see so many movies. I love all your knives. And it's just... Oh, there's another one. Okay, guys. So... <laughs> Tony and I were talking about these yesterday. You guys know that this the one yesterday was purple. And so what I always thought, if you guys remember arts and crafts when you were a kid in school, especially on his backside, you guys remember that dark wax covered paper that had the color underneath? It would get scratched or wrinkled. Did you like that? Immediately, I found a really awesome knife that I like that reminded me of my childhood. To think that a switchblade would remind you of your childhood. <laughs> this is you, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys know we're going to see Tony. 
again up in Portland. Yeah. So maybe you'll have the manual version of this. Thank you. Maybe. Possibly. We'll see. We'll I'll see. try. I only really? have three days to work, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Us too. He's like, don't be throwing shit out there and make me get this yeah. shit. <laughs> People are going to see this and expect it. I'm going to have to tell them this. Mike lied. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, hey guys, guys, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well, then maybe we won't. Okay, so we're going to stop at Enrique Pena's table and look at the stuff he had out. But Enrique packed up early. Are you already filming? Womp womp. You're already filming, aren't you? Oh. Anyway, yeah, he decided to pack up early and leave. Just hanging around, drinking beer. Actually, Enrique sold all of his stuff. He's got pins, bro. I like that. Bloody Stormtrooper. Bloody Stormtrooper. Customized by X and X. How much are they? 175. Look at that. A decent pin at a knife show that's not 600 fucking dollars. It doesn't have to be. So, Enrique, what's coming out new? What are you going to do new? Have you got anything new in the chamber that you're going to fucking throw out? Got one? I'm not going to tell you about it. <laughs> no, it's just too much. Too much? Yes. I have plans for like the next year and a half stuff to be coming out. Nice. Okay. Well, I will definitely, when we get to Portland, I'll make sure we swing by before you run out of here. So, Got to get early for the good stuff. If you don't, if you haven't handled one of Enrique's knives, one of the production knives, they're, they're fucking great. I, I've done a couple of videos about them. They're fucking great. Nice to see you. Hey, nice to see you, man. Thank you for stopping by. No problem. Fighter streaks. Yeah, that's. Did you already start filming? Yeah, because. How uh, long were you filming? Just now. Oh, okay. So we're at Olami, and a I lot of people gave me less crap because I didn't get a chance to stop by at USN. I was so busy at USN trying to film yeah, stuff. Yeah, the stuff that we brought to this show, it's it's actually more cool than USN. We had a little bit more time to get into it. So. Yeah. And well, in USN, I was working to be able to get a knife release, and it just it worked out that it made more sense. I did see it like one o'clock in the morning. Oh. <laughs> it's a restaurant that one. Hey, that's not even that late. No. That's not. Oh. So, you guys know I like Alama cutlery. Let's ask Gene. Anything new and cool coming out, or is there anything new and cool here? Well, look, the one knife that everybody's been asking me about is of the course. snapper. Here it is with one of the blade shapes. Ooh. And now we have a much better idea of when it's coming, and it's end of November. So anybody that's signed up on the Whipper Snapper page is gonna get an email in the middle of middle of next month about like, hey, start thinking about what you want. We're getting super, super close. And just if you're only signed up for that, you're only gonna get that email. We're not gonna send you anything else. Some people are afraid of yeah. signing up for newsletters, but I specifically made a separate list. I, I like this. Uh, and it's really gonna get, like this. You know, it's getting all the options you guys see on all of our other knives, and then a couple of new ones that I, I'm not gonna talk about yet. There'll be a surprise. Yeah. Um, Are you gonna have some of that stuff at Portland though? No, not yet. Okay, not yet. That's in a week. That's, that's, I keep forgetting it's next week. <laughs> it's next week. Well, because like I keep saying, I, I'm thinking ahead to the 11th because I get on another plane and go to to Washington yeah, State for a week. Other than that, the new stuff is we're making a batch of soloists starting Monday. In both, I don't have the other blade shape, but in both shapes, we're still excited about these. I mean, I really want to get these into people's hands. I was going to ask you about that at at Vegas at USN, and I didn't get a chance to. Is this adjustable? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. So all so you have somebody turned it the wrong way, but yeah, you can you can slide it up and down. Okay. This oblique checkered one, you can rotate so that the slanted side is which side you want. You can double up on it. You can put it on the other side. Nice. But even with the way that it's mounted, if you wanted to middle finger flip it, you could. That, and that's, so, yeah. Okay, I use a lot of wrist there, but you could. Yeah. Um, and then there's another thumb stud that I can't show you because I don't have one that's just domed. And we have that in multiple sizes. And it's plain. But we can customize and finish it yeah. to match the rest of the hands. Which uh, is one of the great things about Alamic. You guys, it's, it's there's really, so many things you can do with your knives. Oh yeah, and there are things that you can do with them that we've thought of but haven't even done yet. Yeah. Just because, I don't know, just because, right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're excited about this one. I like, the, I like the color on that. I like the, that bold. 
bright against just a standard like just ti gray titanium with yeah. that brilliant yeah. gold. Well, another benefit to these two is that I'll be kind of updating our upgrade program page. You know, a lot of people know about it, but it's not like super duper official. But basically, if you find a plain Jane or even a, a, a semi plain Jane Palamic, you know, anywhere, I don't care where you got it, I mean, you can send it to us. We'll do a free spot treatment. But if you want to change the way that it looks, uh, there's a lot of things we can do. Yeah. And so versions like this one, it's just gray, or like this one, you know, it's just plain, even though this does have the kinetic texture. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot we can do to it. If you find just a basic blasted one online, or even if it's got you know in tropic or just nothing too invasive, send it up to do a mean, fancy on it. But, but that's not the olamic of your dreams. You know, let us know. Like we'll make it happen. That's not, that's nice. There's a lot of there's a lot of companies that'll do that. Like either you buy it now this way, or you buy another one later. Yeah. And, and that's exactly. And so there's only a couple is, companies I know that do that. Yeah. And so we made this one. Not because we just love gray, but because this is one that Nick Shabazz really loved. And we didn't make it for Nick. It was basically, I was getting an order ready for DLT training, and this was in that order, but I needed to send Nick a knife, and, and I just yanked it out of that. But now it's here because he sent it back. He doesn't keep stuff. So, any of you guys just oh, not, not he, to. The stuff he buys, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. so, so that you guys know, like Nick Shabazz, and Nick and I have talked about this. If you send him a knife, he will not keep it. He will not take a gift knife because he feels that it lends more credence to his channel if he's sending that back. If he buys a knife because he likes it, then it's his. But he will not take a knife. Like You can't say, hey, I'm going to give you this knife. He won't say yes. He'll say, I will take it and I'll do a review. I'll carry it, but I will not keep it. And then he may go and buy that same knife if he likes it. But that's one of the things. So no, I didn't mean to throw that in there. I was just... Well, it's even I'm glad you reminded in me many that. cultures, it's bad luck to gift a knife. Yeah. So if I'm ever gifting a knife, which I end up doing because, oh crap, I need a gift. Oh, look, you know, knives. I always ask for like a penny, penny or something. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, a dollar. Yeah, that's my dad. You, you gave me a dollar. You gotta do it. Other than that, I mean, that's that's the new stuff till the end of the year as far as the you know, models go. As yeah. far as, you know, features finishes and things like that, it's, I don't know, we might come up with something tomorrow, it's gonna be like sick. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. Depends on how much whiskey, yeah. whiskey you drink, yeah. what you write down, like that's yeah. a good idea. But I mean, I can, like sh I can like show you something like, okay, so this is a texture, it's all done by hand, that, you know, we just did for the first time. Brought it to the show just to kind of get people's thoughts on it. But I like that. It's like, are we ever gonna make it again? I don't know, you know. It's, can that fall under the this is new category? Yeah, it doesn't have a name. No, pretty cool, you know. And that would be something where you could do a lot of stuff. Like you could, you could tumble that and then re-anodize it, get different colors yeah, and stuff exactly, on it. Yeah, exactly. it's. See the facets. So. Yeah, you can see you would see more of the facets and things like that. And it's all and it's also you know there are so many machines, textures and checkering or grooves or you know you guys have seen it all. Like yeah. they have like all of the knives that are coming out now. Things that are milled have like these milling patterns, and we're just. Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna do the we're gonna do the ones done by hand. Like we're not we're gonna do that. Right? That works. Thank Thanks you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, anytime. See you next Thanks weekend. For filming. No problem. I always like filming. I just don't. Hi right, guys, show's over. I'm home. And now starts the long, lengthy process of this edit because this I have not decided yet. I'm not sure. It looks like it could be two 20 minute videos or one 40 minute video have not decided yet. So you'll probably see it at the end of whatever, or I will film if I decide I'm going to cut it. If I find a good spot to cut it. Um, we only filmed on Sunday. We only filmed today because it was just, it was too insane trying to film yesterday. So it's about 7.30 ish PM. I just got home, got some, got everything put away. Um, did get an acquisition to the show. As you saw, I did get that mixed writer. That will be going up for sale eventually. Uh, you'll see it on the channel here first. Matt won a, uh, I won a Cope, Ed Cope. Um, I won one of the lotteries. Uh, Matt picked that up. He paid me back for it. So um, the only thing that I, I won a Jeremy Marsh and immediate, I didn't want it. The guy behind me in line wanted it, said he'd pay me more for it. So sold that immediately. But I did bring the Strider back because I did want it on the channel. And then I'll be putting that up for sale before too much longer. So guys, like I said, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. But tell me why. Um, I'm going to do all the things, you know, where all the corners are at this point. You've seen it all. Uh, if you want to go, I talked to, I talked to Mattia Brani 
and they would love to have me up Petaluma. That's not gonna be that hard of a trip. That one, I think I can just do a weekend trip up there and not have to have too much Patreon money. There's some place for me to stay up there. So um, that might be something that Nico and I go do and we just go, because uh, there's an apartment at the, at the shop. So there's a good chance we're gonna make that eight hour drive, that six, eight hour drive up to Petaluma and, uh, and, and get with Mattia and Mark and we'll just, we'll film a video up there of just how they make beg knives there, what they do to them there and what they do as far as uh, the Mattia Bonner Barani custom kitchen knives. So guys, like I said, if you like them, you like them. If you don't like them, you don't like them, but at least make it known whether you do or not. Um, it is good for the channel. So I'm exhausted, I'm tired. I'm gonna try and get this edit done and try to have this video up Monday. If it's two, then it'll be up Monday and then I'll finish the second one on Tuesday. I might break it and then just finish editing the other one tomorrow. So, and there's a couple cool videos. I've got a bunch of movie replica knives that, uh, that I got from, from someone. It's Matthew. I got them from Matthew. Matt has a ton of replica knives from, from everything from Predator to, to Terminator and things like that. So I have those replica knives here, uh, the, the, uh, the theatrical replicas, and we'll do a, we'll do a video about knives that I loved growing up in movies. So Take it easy, guys. I'll see you next time. Sorry about the long outro, but it's, it's hard to keep a coherent thought when you're just tired. See you later.